Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to revisit an old idea for a geometry node that can generate a random stack of paper like this. This time, it's updated for Blender 3.3, and so it uses fields. Also, we're going to use one of the UDIM tips that I had in one of my previous videos so that we can get a different image on each page a lot more easily. Now, I'm sure there's about 50 different ways you could accomplish this, and this is just one of them. So let's jump right into it. To start with, we're going to want to create the piece of paper that we're going to stack. We'll just resize a cube to do this. So in my end panel, I'll set the width to eight and a half inches, the length to 11 inches, and the height to 0 0.05 millimeters. Now there's a bunch of different ways we could do this duplication, and I'm going to show you one of the simpler ones. I'm sure in the comments people will tell me all sorts of other ways that I could do this, but this is the way I'm choosing to show you. We'll add our node tree and add an instance on points. Our geometry will be the instance. Now we need to create the points. For this, I'll simply use a mesh line. And I'll plug that into my points. So we want to control how far apart each page is. We could, of course, put an input on our node that we'd enter the thickness of the paper, but we'd like this to be a bit more automated. So if we take the bounding box of our geometry, we can find the z-height by subtracting the minimum from the maximum with a vector math node. Then if we separate this vector, we have our z-height. Now we want to use this to create the offset for each additional page we add. We'll add in a combine XYZ node and plug it into our offset. We'll plug the Z into the Z and leave the X and Y alone. Now if we look at the side of our object and zoom in, we can see we've got 10 pages stacked exactly on top of one another. Now before we go any further, we're going to want to make sure we've applied the scale of our object. Now as we can see, our pages are stacked on top of each other with mathematical accuracy, and we're going to want to be able to put a little padding in between them, even if it's a tiny amount. So I can simply add that to my offset between each page. I'll use a math node, and then I can control the padding using this value. Now of course we aren't going to want to have to control this using decimals like this we'll want to be able to type in a distance. So we'll have to use a little hack to do that. We'll add a node that has a distance input on it. Let's say a mesh primitive cone. I can plug one of the input sockets into one of the distance sockets of the cone. That will make this socket on the input a distance input. I can go and rename it padding and then delete this node. I can then hook padding up to this value. Now I can type this in in millimeters since my interface is set to millimeters. So if I want this to be 0.01 millimeters, I can type that in here and get a very minuscule distance between each page. Now that we have our stack of pages, we want to spread them out. We can of course do this with a translate instances node. We'll grab a duplicate of our group input and drag an input to this translation. Of course, from here, we can adjust the whole stack, but that's really not gonna to be too helpful. Instead, we're gonna to wanna to be able to randomize this offset. So we'll add a random value node and set it to vector. We'll put our translation into the maximum and also into the minimum. I'll use a vector math node to scale the minimum by negative one. So now when I put a value in my X and Y of this translation, it's going to set the minimum and maximum translation value. But what if I happen to put in a Z value here? That's going to mess up my whole stack. So I don't want this Z value to be able to do anything. So to control that, I'm going to shift right click and drag through this line. And I'm going to add a couple of nodes here to remove the Z control from this vector. I'll add a separate XYZ node and then a combine XYZ node. And I'll only hook up the X and Y values between them. 
Now, no matter what I put in the Z on the input, that will not pass through. And only the X and Y translation will go through. Now that I have some random movement of the pages, I also want to add a little bit of random rotation as well. So we want to use a rotate instances node instead of a translate instances node. I'll copy this bit of the node tree, but plug a new input into this one and rename this rotation. And I'll plug this into the rotation value. But here's one thing. I actually want this to rotate around the Z axis because you can see here if I rotate the X or the Y, that certainly isn't what I'm going for. So what I'll do is delete the separate XYZ node here, cut these lines, I'll change this rotation input to a float and tie this just to the Z. Now I have a nice control over just the Z rotation. For a little more realism, we want to be able to rotate these pages not just from the exact center of them, so we want to randomize the pivot point of rotation as well. Since that's a move in the XY direction on these pages, I can duplicate this bit of the tree again, connect it to pivot point, and connect a new section here, and change this to rotation center. Now as I change these values, it adds a bit of spread but it's due to the fact that they're rotating now from different center points. So now that we have a nice stack of papers, let's move on to the shading. I'll add a new node tree, add an input, object info, and connect the random to the base color. This will give me grayscale colors for all the pages. But since I want some specific colors, I'm gonna use a color ramp node set it to constant, and define a few colors. Now I'm also going to want to put some text on these pages, but I want a whole bunch of different images. So I'm going to use a technique from one of my earlier videos, where I'm going to use a texture mapping offset to choose a different UDIM tile for each page. First I'll disconnect my color for the moment and then I'll attach an image texture into my base color. Now I've created some images of some text, and I've named them with the UDIM scheme, starting with 1001 and going up through 1006. And since I have the Node Wrangler plugin enabled, with my image texture selected, I can press Ctrl T to add a UV and a mapping node. I'll go into UV editing, and do a project from view. So now with my UV map lined up on my first tile, I'll go back to my shading tree. Already this is starting to look good, but all the pages are currently the same. I want to use my location on my mapping to choose different tiles. I'm going to duplicate my object info node, so I want to create a random number between 0 and the number of pages I have minus 1. That's because zero counts as one. So if I have six images, the indexes of those images will go from zero to five. Since the random input on the object info is a random number between zero and one, I can simply multiply this number. So I want to multiply this by five. Now this number will be a number between zero and five. But because I want this to be an integer, I'm going to go ahead and round this. So now I'll have an integer between 0 and 5. If I have less than 10 UDIM tiles, this is about all I'll need to do. I could drag out from the location a combine XYZ node and plug this into the X. And now as you can see, each page is getting randomly one of the pages from the UDIMs. However, if I wanted to expand this so that I could have any number of UDIM tiles, I would have to have it deal with the rows of 10 tiles that UDIMs do. So the first thing I would need to do is to take this number and do a modulo of 10. So this is going to get the column that the tile is in, 0 through 9. Then I'm going to need to get the row that the tile is in. So if I take my random number and I divide it by 10, 
If I round this number down by using a floor, this will give me the row. You can think of it this way. Say I got the number 8. If I divide 8 by 10, I get 0.8. If I round that down, it goes to 0, which is row 0. But let's say I have the number 24. If I divide that by 10, I get 2.4. And if I round that down, I get 2. So that's going to be in row 2. And I can simply use that number to drive my Y position. Now that I have this, I should probably make this reusable. So I'll grab these nodes and press Ctrl G. The only thing I'll need to do is drag to the count here. And remember, this count was the number I wanted minus one. So I'll just need to subtract one from this number. So now I could call this node something like Udim Picker. I'll make it an asset. I'll jump back in and name that input number of tiles. So now this very simple setup will allow me to select a random UDIM tile for a set of objects. Now finally, if I want to combine this with my images, I could do something like this. I can use a color mix node and use the color of my images as the factor. Color one will be the color of my ink. We'll just go with black for now. And now color two can be the color of my pages. Of course, I'd want to tweak these so that they all looked good. And overall, I think they look pretty good. So there we go. With a little bit of work, you can get a pretty decent random stack of paper. Also, I hope the UDIM tile picker group is helpful for you. If you're interested in this source file, it's available via my Patreon. I'll put a link in the description. Speaking of my Patreon, I want to give a shout out to my current patrons. Your support's really appreciated. It's encouraging me to continue making this content. You can also check out my Gumroad page, which I'll also link in the description. I've got a ton of assets there that you can download. It's pay what you want, so if you want to pick them up for free, you can. And if they're worth something to you, you can leave a tip at checkout. Anyhow, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.